This is May Park. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I have new card making video tutorial for you guys and this time I'm gonna create a watercolor card using stamps and watercolor markers from Altenew. This is the new watercolor brush markers Spring Garden Set from Altenew. It includes 10 colors. The colors in this set are very vibrant and easy to blend. If you are a beginner at watercoloring, I'm sure you're gonna find these markers easy to use. This is the card I'm gonna make in today's video and I'm gonna show you how to blend in colors and create different shades out of one marker and also how to add interest on your watercolor images. I'm also gonna share the close-up video of my desk at the end of this video so make sure to watch the video to the end. And don't forget to give me thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any new videos from me. And are you guys ready? And let's get started. This is the watercolor card that I'm going to show you how to create in this video. I stamped the images from three different stamp sets, colored them with alternate watercolor brush markers, and popped them up on the card front after die cutting. Last month, I created this one layer watercolor card using alternate watercolor 36 pen set and spring date stamp set. It took me over one and a half hour to color all of the images as I wanted to add extra details. But this time, I'll be showing you the quick and easy way to watercolor your images that anyone can try. This is the new watercolor brush markers, Spring Garden Set from All to New. They come in 10 vibrant colors and blend easily with water and different colored brushes. Each barrel is filled with water-based ink and coordinates with a line of alternate crisp dye inks. To start off, just remove the green ring from the barrel and gently push the barrel until the ink comes out. The flexible as sturdy bristles on the brush tip allow you to form both broad and fine strokes. You can easily apply color straight from the marker or dilute with water for softer look. In this video, I'll be using alternate fine tip watercolor brush to blend in colors, but you could use a regular watercolor paint brush if you want. When it comes to watercoloring, it's important to choose a high quality watercolor paper. Today I'm going to use my favorite watercolor paper, Artist Cold Press 140 pound watercolor paper, which has textured rough paper. If you like bleeding or ballooning, you could use hot press watercolor paper, which has more smooth surface. These are the alternate stem sets I'll be using today. Beautiful day, remember this, and coral charm. You could use any outline floral images from your stash. But if you are a beginner at watercoloring, I recommend you choose the image with large opening areas and less petals. For my stamping, I'm going to use my original Misty stamping tool as I know I'll need to stamp my images a few times at the same position. I'm going to start positioning my stamps on the watercolor paper. The placement of the stamps doesn't matter as I'll be die cutting the images and create my own dimensional floral arrangement. After picking up the stamps with the misty door, I'm going to ink up my stamps with alternate permanent black ink and stamp the images on the watercolor paper. You could use any other waterproof ink for stamping such as Versafine Onyx Black Ink. I didn't get a good intense impression on most of the images because of the texture on the watercolor paper. So I'm going to ink up the stamps again with the same black ink and stamp the images again. I'm making sure that I transfer my images well on the paper by pressing the misty door hard with even pressure. I ended up stamping 4 times to make sure I get crisp images. Then I'm going to dry my paper with my heat tool to prevent from ink smudging. Alternate permanent black ink is pigment based which means the ink takes time to dry. You can start watercoloring first and die cutting later, but I'm going to die cut the images first so I know how many images I need to watercolor for building my own floral arrangement. I'm going to place the coordinating dies of the stamped images and secure them on the paper using washi tape so they won't move while die cutting. I'm placing my stamped panel and dies between cutting plates. I'm also placing a piece of print paper over my panel to prevent from picking up any dirt on my cutting plate. Then I'll be running them through my Spellbinders Platinum die cutting machine. 
I'm going to build the floor arrangement roughly on the colored cardstock to see which image I need to keep for my watercoloring. I just didn't want to waste my time on coloring the images I wouldn't use. But you know what? I felt like I needed all of these images, so I decided to color all of them. I ended up not wasting any single image, which is good. I'm going to attach my die cuts on the alternate watercolor palette temporarily with alternate glue tape. That way, I can rotate my images without touching the paper to make my watercoloring process easy. As I mentioned earlier, I die cut my images first because I wanted to decide which image I'm going to use for my floral arrangement. Additionally, I think I like the way coloring the die cut images instead of coloring the images on the whole watercolor paper because I don't need to worry about my hand touching and ruining the images. Since this is my first time using alternate watercolor brush markers, I wasn't sure how vibrant and intense the colors are. For the first a few petals, I applied the color straight from the marker to the bottom of each petal and blend in color with a watercolor brush. But it was difficult for me to control the amount of ink came out from the marker with one application. So I decided to scribble my watercolor brush marker on the watercolor palette first and pick up the color with my watercolor brush. When it comes to watercoloring, there are a few ways to watercolor images. Today, I'll be showing you a quick and easy way to watercolor your floral images and share a couple of tips on how to add some interest and depth on your images. Once I pick up some color from my watercolor palette with my watercolor brush, I'm applying the color to the bottom of each petal and the areas where two petals meet together to indicate the shading areas. Make sure to use less water for your first application as it's important to have intense color in the beginning. Before the stroke is dry, I'm going to take my watercolor brush and pull the color out from the darker stroke. If you want to create some smooth transition on the color, make sure to apply the color before the previous application or layer is dry. Otherwise, you will leave some harsh lines or watermark. Personally, I love those harsh lines as they create the illusion of some texture, but this time I decide to blend the colors well without any harsh lines. If you let the color dry between application, you will also leave harsh lines between layers. If you don't like those harsh lines, you can soften the hard edges using a water brush even after the ink is already dry. To create a gradient look of the color, it's important to remove the ink from your watercolor brush and wipe off the excess ink using a paper towel in between before you pull out the color. You can go over the image to diffuse the color or to add more color. You just need to control the amount of water you add to the ink. Please note that I'm intentionally leaving some white areas to indicate the highlights on the petals. When you are done with one color, just squeeze the batter of your watercolor brush to make the water out and wipe off the ink using a paper towel. The ink may be stained on the brush, but no worries, it does transfer to your next color. You can go further by adding more layers and dimension using more darker color. Adding different color is also a great way to create some interest to your image. You can also add tiny dots to add interest and shading on your petals using more intense color and less water. I ended up adding white dots on my two big flowers using a white gel pen. Now I'm going to turn on some music and speed up the process and I'll be back once I'm done watercoloring.
support my colorful floral images, I decide to color my entire background using watercolor wash technique. If you are not good at this technique, I recommend you use a large size watercolor paint brush. You can create a more organic look when you use lots of water this time. It's a shame I ended up covering my beautiful background with die cuts. Once my coloring is finished, I'm going to clean my watercolor brush and watercolor palette using a paper towel. Then I'm going to use my heat tool to dry my watercolor panel. Next, I'm going to mount my watercolor panel on the A2 size top folding white card base using double sided tape. You could use a regular glue tape if you want. But strong adhesive like this double sided tape helps your watercolor paper flat and sturdy. To add interest on my background, I'm going to splatter the background with alternate watercolor brush markers. When you choose the colors for your splatter background, it's safe to choose the colors from the color palette you used for your floral images. If you want to create more small controlled splatters, you could pick up the ink using a small paintbrush and tap the body of your paintbrush with your fingers. You can also add dust using a colored pen to create a look of the controlled splatters if you are not good at creating splatters. Make sure to dry the previous splatters using heat tool before you add the next splatters with a different color to avoid the colors mixing up together. Once my background is done, I'm going to dry my panel again using a heat tool. However, I recommend you set your panel aside for about 10 minutes to let it air dry. Then your splatters will dry so beautifully without breaking out. Now it's time to assemble my card. You can start mounting your die cuts on the card front right away, but I recommend you take some time to play around with your images first to find the perfect placement for each element. It's always good to set the placement of your large images first to help you decide the placement for the rest of the images. Then just move and rotate your elements and see if they look good together. Don't forget to think about the color balance as well. Once you're happy with the placement of your die cuts, you can take a photo of it with your phone to remember the placement. I'm going to mount my floral elements on the card front using 3M foam tape to give dimension and I'm also using Tonic Nouveau Crystal Glaze as I'm going to adhere some of the die cuts directly on the watercolor panel to achieve some various dimension. I pulled out some sentiment left over from my previous project and placed it temporarily on my card front. If you had experience with having trouble to find a placement for the sentiment banner, after you create some beautiful floral arrangement, I strongly recommend you give this tip try. This is a great way to have your images looking good near your sentiment. You can also trim off some of the leaves if they don't look good with the entire design. You can reuse them to fill in the gaps between the elements. Now I'm going to work on my sentiment. I'm prepping a piece of black cardstock with anti-static powder bag to prevent any stray powder from sticking to unwanted areas while heat embossing. I'm going to pull out a couple of sentiment stamps from alternate simple flower stamp set and ink up the stamps with alternate embossing ink and stamp them on the black cardstock. While the ink is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle some alternate pure white embossing powder of the sentiments and tap the excess powder off my paper. Then I heat set my sentiments with heat tool. Next, I'm going to trim my sentiments into a thin banner using a craft knife and ruler. I was on the fence between two sentiments and I decided to go with leave in the moment as I thought the large sentiment would work better against the busy floral images. I remounted the sentiment banner on the card front using 3M foam tape to give some dimension. I'm using my TSQ ruler to place my sentiment banner in straight. I'll be finishing off my card by adding a couple of leaves on the top. I'm so glad I ended up using every single images I watercolored. This is it for today. I hope this video tutorial inspires to create a dimensional floral card using any watercoloring mediums. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't done it yet, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any new videos from me. If you have any questions, please leave comments below and I'd be happy to answer them for you. This video is part of all two new watercolor brush markers 
Willis Blog Hub. Make sure to check out my blog for more details and leave a comment on my Blog Hub post for a chance to win a $30 gift certificate to Altoony Online Store. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time with another video. Bye bye! And are you guys ready? And let's get started. Are you guys ready? And let's get started. Are you guys ready? And let's get started.